So you're going to start your first year biomedical science soon. But what should you expect? Which courses are typically given in a first year of biomedical science? Well, first of all, you're going to start university, so congratulations. The main thing this implies is that you're about to embark on a journey of putting a lot of stuff in your head and then hopefully get it out correctly on the exams while making sure it sticks within that brain of yours for as long as possible. Besides the specific things you are going to study in each course to become a biomedical scientist, it is important to realize that you need to adopt a method of studying, one that works best for you, and one that will please your parents as they probably saved some money to invest in you. So try not to f*** up, no pressure. No, seriously, most likely you will have to go next level, but I can generalize for all of you. Maybe your memory is visual. Maybe you remember better when studying outside. Maybe you study best from 8 to 12 p.m. at night. Who knows? In any case, try to figure out what works best for you ASAP with respect to the size of each course you will have. So in order to paint a more complete picture, I actually dove into biomedical science year one programs of five different universities. And I've put them side to side so that you can get a grasp on the subtle nuances and have a clear view on the overlapping parts. Each time I will list specific courses and put them in the following six categories. Chemistry, Biology, Physics, Maths, Others and Electives. Ready? Here we go. So the first example, there's chemistry for the biosciences and biochemistry under the numerator of chemistry. Second example, inorganic chemistry and organic chemistry. Third, general and biological chemistry and then biochemistry and molecular biology. Fourth example, general chemistry, elementary organic chemistry, advanced principles of biochemistry. And in example five, biomedical chemistry. So you can already grasp here that how the course is called specifically can vary along countries and different universities. Then for the biological part, there's in example one, genetics and molecular biology, cell biology and neuroscience, and fundamentals of physiology and anatomy. Second example, introduction to biology and genetics, cytology and general histology, and the third, general physiology. The third example has courses like cell biology, histology, and anatomy. The fourth, general biology, molecular genetics, cell biology, and animal physiology. Fifth example, molecular biology, cells, tissues, and organisms. Then diving into the physics part, example one, there's no specific course that mentions anything about physics. Does it mean that you won't have to apply some physics? No, maybe this will come later, but it's not explicitly mentioned here in this first year of biomedical science. The second example there is physics. The third example, they call it biophysics. Fourth example, intro to physics. And the fifth, medical biophysics. So safe to say that all these courses will cover physics. Then we'll dive into the math part. Skills for the biosciences. Now this is very Elusive, let's say, but I took a deeper look into what this course actually provides and there is some mathematical models in there to use in biosciences. So I've put it in the same category because in example two, there is mathematics. In example three, mathematical methods for biomed. In example four, calculus and statistics. And in example five, there's also no explicit mentioning of anything related to maths. Does it mean you won't need maths? Not per se. You might need applied maths to solve some biological problems. Then the other category. And then you can see that I've left it blank here for example one, but then in example two, you can categorize something like biomedical information and information processing, which aligns with skills in biomedical research in the third example. And then, I list this under others 
but then in the example four, you can already choose between immunology or developmental biology or genomics or neurobiology or endocrine physiology. So here you home in on some very specific biological subfields, which is also the case in example five where you get human neurobiology. Remember in the biology part, in example one, cell biology and neuroscience, well, they just covered this, the neuroscience part, also a bit introductory in one course that is called cell biology and neuroscience. While it's a very separate course in example five, human neurobiology. See also here in example three, you get a course methods in biomedical research which is also categorized under others because there you get a first introduction to which methods you will use to use in scientific research with a biomedical focus. Then another layer in the other part, because in the first example, you get fundamentals of pharmacology. And then in the fifth example, you get an introductory course on public health and preventive medicine. In terms of electives, there's no electives in year one for example one, but there's many in year two, as I've already noticed. In example two, there's no electives. There's electives on top that you can choose in example three. There's electives in example four, and there's two electives you can choose in example five. So there you have it. In general, you get the major outline, right? There's a strong emphasis on basic science courses in the beginning which makes sense because you need a solid foundation to build upon in your further studies. What I also want you to take away from this is that although some courses might have different names, they will largely cover the same topics. And perhaps if one university covers a topic in year one, maybe the other university has planned that topic in early year two. Get my point? Now something else you will want to know, how much time am I actually going to spend trying to stay awake in an auditorium listening to a professor how much time am I going to spend studying at home or in my dorm room? And how much time will I actually be spending in lab in year one of biomedical science? And well, there's no single one answer here. And I can only speak from my own experience, of course. But a first important note, if you go to class, make sure you pay attention. If you get the concept on the spot, then that's less effort that you will need if you need to revise the material at home in preparation for exams. Second, again, not every person is the same. And maybe someone will grasp the material more easily than others or memorize stuff faster, but that's just what it is. So try to make sure you find your own system that works. Third, you will indeed get some practicals, either in a lab or a big hall to make some exercises on paper. I'm talking titrations in chemistry, solving physical mathematical problems on paper or spending time behind a computer learning to search for research papers. By the way, I have a video on that. Check it out right here. How much time exactly is divided between theoretical and practical is also very university dependent. So there's no way I can reassure you on that. But just remember this. My hands were also very shaky and clumsy in the beginning but this manual dexterity will grow on you as you get more hands-on, see what I did there, training. So make sure to give it your all. And all that's left for me now is to wish you good luck on your first steps in the biomedical field. Go and get it.